Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, the AI space has taken the world by storm in the last few months. In fact, the big headline this week was Accenture investing $3 billion in artificial intelligence over the next three years in both its data and AI practice, thereby adding 40,000 jobs. Now, in this week's edition of Smart Money, we do a deep dive into the generative AI mega trend. How could it transform industries, companies and transform the way we live? My guest on the show today is Varun Maya. He's the founder and CEO of companies uh, Avi and Scenes. Varun is also a self-proclaimed tech geek, has been writing code for 17 years and creates content about AI on social media. Varun, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, first, tell me, you know, it's a very scary and exciting time to be uh, alive, perhaps because of this whole AI mega trend. Um, but for the uninformed people who have perhaps not jumped onto the bandwagon just yet, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So I think, look, AI has been a buzzword for a very long time and people have been making many of these AI models for a very long time. But what broke it into, I would say, mainstreamness was uh, this tool called ChatGPT that came out and allowed anybody, people like you and me, to be able to prompt it and then output very human-like readable text. I think that's what uh, started the wave and then a lot of other tools came out. So everything you see in content, right? Text, audio, video. We started being able to replicate the parts of humanity that we thought were special to us. So we thought our creativity was special, our artistic sense was special, our, um, you know, our sense of um, the way we write, poetry was special. And then one by one, we got knocked off our perch little by little by little. And I think that's why it's creating uh, so much furor out there. Because I think the one part that made humans very special or believe we are special for a very long time has now been superseded or rather has competition from something brand new. But am I going to lose my job, Varun? I mean, are anchors going to be replaced with an AI generated version? Because there's now text to speech as well, right? I mean, they don't need us anymore. Yeah, uh, two ways to look at it, right? Uh, the way to look at it is, let's say we're on YouTube and you had a very tiny channel, let's say 100 people, 200 people, then maybe then you could use an AI to kind of, you know, replace yourself. But at your scale for the reputation you have, it would be very hard for an AI to capture all the nuance of what you do on a daily basis right now. Five years later, nobody knows, right? Okay. And I'd be lying in public if I said, I know what's going to happen five years later. I have a general idea, uh, but you know what? The last one year has proven me wrong. My timelines were much longer. I said, well, 2030, I'd written a book in, um, I think, 2017 called Pajama Profit, where the last chapter was one day AI is going to take your job. It was supposed to be clickbaity to a certain extent, but what ended up happening was my timeline there was 2030. Mm. And look at us now, we're in 2023. So uh, I don't know. I think nobody can predict the future. We all know that it's going to happen at some point, like 100,000 years in the future, a million years in the future. At some point, it's going to happen. Uh, but it's almost like those timelines have shrunk to the next three, four years. To answer your question of will you have your job, um, unlikely for you to lose your job. You're at scale, you're at a reputation that's hard to be, you know, dethroned. Okay. <laughs> you're making me feel better about, uh, about my job. But, you know, I mean, I'm sure that's the question that millions of people who are watching have, right? What about economy in the age of AI? What's the impact that all of this would have on, say, the wealth gap, right? And how does this tie in with the universal basic income? Yeah, so there's a saying in software, right, that the marginal cost of production is very low with software, right? So let's say I, I produce one unit of the software, it's going to cost me X. But the minute I want to make a copy of that, let's say I want to make 100,000 copies of that, I can do it at near zero. It's not actually zero, it's a little more than zero. That was the advantage of software. And we saw this advantage being played out in the last 30 years. Um, actually, a little lesser than that, but let's take 30 years, you know, as a timeline. Before that, what did humans do? We had jobs, we had the concept of jobs, but all of them were offline. We had very little of this, you know, we'll do this online, we'll send an email online. So I feel like the offline world is going nowhere. It's only going to be supplemented by the online world. In fact, even in India, right, if you, if you zoom out and look at it, apart from like some clusters, like let's say EdTech, gaming, few others, it's actually very hard to make money online. And a lot of people have figured out that, you know, the next door guy selling um, cakes or bed sheets is probably making more money than, you know, most startup founders, right? So... I think offline is here to stay. Online is a great advertising and distribution platform. You want to attract potential customers to come buy your the, the sporting equipment that you're selling. Online is a great place to do that. I feel like there is where AI will sort of make the people with a good brand become even better, right? Someone famous once told me this, right? India is an underbranded nation. We don't have enough brands. And AI actually allows you to make 
like the whole hog, right? Because everything that AI is coming after right now can be described as content, except maybe code and a few other segments. You look at text, uh, you look at uh, video, you look at um, images, you look at audio, it's all content. Mm. And all of that content put together allows you to build a brand. A lot of people had to hire other people to make this happen for them. But today you have a bunch of tools that make your life easier. And so we're, going to like talk, uh, we're going to talk a little more about those tools, right? Because I do want you to help us with, uh, I understand, uh, you know, with some live uh, uh, sort of examples as well. Everyone knows about ChatGPT, so I'm going to leave that aside. But there are several other generative AI tools which are sort of taking the world by storm. There's Midjourney, there's Eleven Labs. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, um, you know, I actually tried Midjourney many years ago. Right when it first launched, I think this was a couple of years ago. I think this was last year, if I'm not wrong, when I first tried it. And it wasn't that great. And I was like, hmm, I'll give this a pass for now. I'll come back when it's better. Today, it's like really good. Right? And I think a few weeks ago, we, we all got back on Midjourney subscription. It was like really, really, really good. So a lot of people, especially, and, and we see this on Twitter, right? Twitter is slightly ahead of the curve. So they're kind of used to what kind of outputs Midjourney puts out now. But if I go to the average person, who hasn't used Midjourney, which by the way is most of India's population, and I show them a Midjourney output, their mind is blown for a second. They're like, how is, how is this doing show us, this? A, show us a demo. How does it look? What do you use it for? And I mean, just, you know, one glimpse for our viewers. Sure. So let's bring up Midjourney on screen, guys. Awesome. So that's Midjourney on screen. And we're just going to quickly prompt um, for a Disney Pixar-like image a Disney Pixar-like image of um, a wrestler, of a sumo wrestler, let's say. Okay. That's it. It's just one line. Let's hit the enter button. So it'll take a few seconds. And you can see it sort of the image being birthed in real time, right? It's magical to look at. So basically, you can create any type of image in a really short period of time and that person can be anywhere in any avatar, so to speak, right? Yes. So you can imagine anything. In fact, the keyword to prompt mid-journey into action is imagine, slash imagine, right? Oh. It, you are now limited by what's going on in your head. In fact, um, my friend keeps saying this, right? He keeps saying that uh, the last generation rewarded people's skills. Today, this generation rewards people's taste. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like if you have great taste, um, using these tools allows you to, you know, kind of um, put out exceptional sort of images, videos, uh, text, all of that fun stuff. Okay. Let's bring up one of those images on screen, please. Oh, that looks pretty cool, actually. You did this in less than, what, two, two seconds. I mean, <laughs> you just, yeah, it, you, you need to know what the, the right prompt is, right? Yeah. So let's, let's try another one. Let's try um, uh, a Japanese woman um, in a kimono standing on top of a mountain. So Midjourney is not used for face swapping. It is largely just a, a creative tool. Image generation. Image generation. Yes. I mean, there are, there are interesting bots on Midjourney that allow you to do things like uh, face swapping. There are also dedicated tools for that. Hopefully, we'll show you one right after this. Oh, great. Okay. I'm looking right, forward so to that, the, actually. <laughs> yeah, this is the sumo wrestler, I think, from the last image, hmm. from the last generation. So what is mid-journey, like from an economic sense, right? What all are the jobs that you can create for yourself? Or how can you upskill yourself using some of these AI tools? Sure. So I think if you're an artist, mid-journey is great. Like, for example, illustration. Mid-journey is great to do things like illustration, right? You want to do logos. It isn't the best logo maker, but there are some styles of logos it's good with. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where mid-journey struggles with. I think a lot of artists have been worried about mid-journey and we've been working so often with image generation tools in general that we've sort of figured out where the gap is. If you ask Midjourney to generate, let's say, an image of a, uh, a coffee cup on a table, right, with some nice logo or branding on one side, it'll do a great job. Now, if you take that same image and you can do stuff in Midjourney where you feed in an image and get more results, if I feed in that image and I say, uh, this is the style of the coffee cup, now make me a coffee book table, make me, you know, a tote bag. If you ask for that, you'll immediately realize that Midjourney is now generating other really cool images, mm -hmm. but there's no consistency between that image and this one, mm -hmm. right? So for now, I think as a designer, if you're going and doing one-off things, right? If you're making one-off images for clients, you're in a little bit of trouble. But if you're responsible for making the entire branding, I got to do this and this and this and this and this, 
In fact, it makes the communication between you and the potential customer or client much easier. A, because the client can see immediately what he or she wants. You sort of can throw them the entire mood board and they can decide what they want. And then you build the entire brand uh, sort of uh, assets around that. Wow. Right. So I feel like that's a very big opportunity for designers. It's making them faster. And it's possible now. In fact, uh, people keep saying this on the internet. I think it's kind of true, right? A person with AI will beat a person without AI. So essentially what's happening is if you have the ability to use these tools, you are now able to take up more projects. Hmm. Right? Let's say if you were able to take up two projects a week, right? In because lesser start... time. In lesser time, yeah, right? In much I mean, lesser time. Much right? lesser time. And this is, by the way, this is, pr- this is beautiful. Look at what this is. He's generated, right? In, in what, less than a minute, this is a stunning picture. I don't think even if you were trying to make this picture on your own using Photoshop or even using just, you know, your creativity, it wouldn't come out like this. All right, on that note, let's take a very quick commercial break, but we will continue this extremely interesting discussion on all things AI on the other side. Stay with us.